In this video, I'll show you how to use the chain rule to differentiate composite functions. This equation provides a method for taking the derivative of the composite function f of g. The method is called the chain rule for differentiation. It says that the rate of change of a composite function is the product of the composed function's rates of change. Let's take a look at a couple of important features of the chain rule. f is the name of what is often called the outside function, and g of x is called the argument of the function f. When differentiating a composite function, you need to take the derivative of the outside function while keeping the argument, g of x in this case, the same. You then multiply f prime of g of x by the derivative of g with x as its argument. Now, let's look at some examples. Sometimes the hardest part is determining whether you can use the chain rule. Here are six examples. Pause the video and decide for which of these functions you would need the chain rule to compute its derivative. In order to determine whether we can use the chain rule for each example, we'll need to identify the outside function and the argument. For h of x, it's probably not too difficult to figure out that the outer function would be sine of x and the argument would be 3x squared because if you replace the argument of f of x with g of x, you'd get sine of 3x squared. For q of t, it might be a little more difficult to see, but you can use f of t equals e to the t as your outside function, and g of t equals 1.44t as your argument. So q of t is a composition of functions, and you could use the chain rule to compute its derivative. For r of z, the logarithmic function might look unfamiliar, but you can use log base 3 of z as the outside function, and 4z minus 7 as the argument. m of w looks a lot like r of z. However, in this example, you're not composing two functions. Instead, you're taking the product of 4w minus 7 and the log base 3 of w. So you'd need to use the product rule rather than the chain rule to compute the derivative of m of w. For s of u, if you rewrite the square root as a one-half power, then you can use u to the one-half power as the outside function and 4u minus 7 as the argument. Finally, for p of y, you could compute the derivative of each term separately. Alternatively, you could use 3y squared minus 7y plus y to the one-half as the outside function and natural log of y as the argument. Now that we've identified the functions for which we could use the chain rule to commute their derivatives, let's look at h of x, q of t, and r of z, and actually use the chain rule to compute these derivatives. For the first example, we have h of x equals sine of 3x squared. We want to write h of x as a composition of f and g. The outside function f is sine of x, and g, the argument, is 3x squared. The next step is to compute the derivatives of the outside function and the argument. Here, the derivative of f is cosine of x and the derivative of g is 6x. To use the chain rule, we need to take the derivative of the outside function, plug in the argument, and multiply by the derivative of the argument. So the derivative of sine is cosine, plug in the argument, and then multiply by the derivative of the argument. Now let's look at the second example. Let q be an exponential function in terms of t. We need to write q as a composition f of g of t. Here, f, the outside function, is e to the t, and g, the argument, is 1.44 times t. Next, we need to find the derivatives of the outside function and the argument. The derivative of e to the t is e to the t, and the derivative of 1.44 t is just 1.44. Putting this together with the chain rule, we take the derivative of the outside function, plug in the argument, and then multiply by the derivative of the argument. Let's look at one more example. Let r be a logarithmic function in terms of x. We first need to recognize that r of x is a composite function. Here, f, the outside function, is log base 3 of x, and g, the argument, is the linear function 4x minus 7. Next, we need to compute the derivatives of the outside function and the argument. Here, the derivative of f is 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of 3, and the derivative of g is 4. 
To apply the chain rule to compute the derivative of r, we first have the derivative of the outside function, and I've left some extra space here because we'll plug in the argument in place of x. Then we multiply by the derivative of the argument. So now we have stated the chain rule and have used it with three different composite functions.